The situation is a bit different. You know, her own is uh, two years straight. Her program is two years straight. Okay. You guys, your own is one one year. Yeah. So, even if you finish this one, because you've already started it, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Let, let's talk about it. So, have you paid the full? Yetunde has almost paid the full academic year. Please, Yetunde, true. Yeah, so for her, it doesn't make sense for her. She will, she's lost it already. So she will have to just do it, right? And then maybe if she wants for Yetunde, because of her profession she is still probably better off staying here yeah. because there could be something coming up for nurses yeah. and she could just get it that's why i told her that she has to uh, right. uh, uh, uh I, I didn't even realize i was did i click to go live i didn't even realize i'm live oh. already live. ah i mean it'd be like if like, i say i click and without realizing okay but Are you live? i just realized that i just clicked to like but don't worry so for her i say end is the number one target that she should get done right and uh yours is also one Abi. Yeah, you're yeah. almost done right yeah. so right. yeah and okay to go there mm -hmm. it means you are technically saving about eight thousand yeah. dollars yeah. but i'm pretty sure you consider so many things like uh, your son My you want to move everybody is so when we get home we can talk more yeah. about that if you don't mind okay yes. yeah 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 What? Oh my goodness! How we, how do how do I miss that? I don't know. I've lost I've lost my voice. I've lost everything. But hey, ah, see this man on the left too. Oh. The police with that too. Oh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, guys. Uh thank you for tuning in to Chaco Melonia. If you have already made it here and you're watching, do me a favor by clicking the share button, the like button. Uh, these videos that I'm making, uh, especially this very one, could be something that will save somebody tomorrow. The information that we share here is priceless. You won't find them in print online. So do me a favor, a big favor, by clicking to share. Tag anybody that you know is on their way to Canada or is new or is planning to come here. I'm telling you this, guys, you won't believe it. Some of the things I share here, they are not just so practical wisdom. There are things that will beat the ordinary person if you do not know your way around. Okay, we just left the border of uh, Canada and the United States in Michigan. In Michigan, Detroit. So we are literally just driving away from Detroit, Michigan right now. And uh, I have a whole squad, a whole squad in my car. It's been hours and hours and hours of a journey with a mission what mission a mission to change a visitor's visa to a work permit for two different families and god has been good we've been able to get all of them now successfully it came with a lot of pain <laughs> a lot of stress a lot of hiccups a lot of challenges but we managed to get it done uh it feels very special even to do it today because today is officially the end of the program that allows you to change your visitor's visa to a work permit if you've been following me you know i've been saying it there is a deadline for changing your visitor's visa to a work permit and what is the deadline February 28th. Today is February 28th. So for us to get this done on the deadline day, it means a lot. It means a lot. I'm hoping that the government of Canada will extend this particular policy to allow people to continue changing the visitor visa to work permit. Hey, but for now, all I can say is that I'm just a happy person. 
Uh, we, I've not had any sleep at all the whole night. I've slept for barely less than 30 minutes. And, uh, but it's been worth it, just the whole night, roaming from one, one border point to another, just trying to get this done. Mm -hmm. We went to Niagara Falls uh, to go and get it done yesterday. Uh, and uh, my people, they, they didn't do it for us. They said they don't do that on Mondays. The truth is that I kind of knew I kind of knew they don't do it on Mondays in Niagara Falls or in the Niagara region. They don't do the changing of the visitor's visa to a work permit. They don't do flag polling. That basically, that's what I should say. They do not do flag polling on Mondays. They only do it from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So going there yesterday, we kind of knew that the chances were very, very, very slim. And... Uh, Hey, I, I, I just can't go too much into the details. I'm just too happy. That's all I can say. I'm just too happy. <laughs> yeah, just too happy. Mm. Just too happy. Just too happy. Mm -hmm. mm. Is it too much or the heat is low? Okay. Okay. Is the heat too much for you guys or I should lower it? Which one? Okay. okay. Is this a fun land? Uh, that is just a bear land. You won't buy them. <laughs> That's just a bear land for future possibility. Maybe as they give more and more Africans that we will build house for you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we need it. I know. Sweat, uh, brass. Yeah. This is uh, a very sweet city. You, you like the city? You like, I like it too. This is actually my first time coming to this side, guys. It's my first time. I've never come as far as to like to the Detroit border. So it's my first time actually come. I'm so used to Niagara, right? Uh, no. it's, it's beautiful out here. It's beautiful out here. It's different from what we usually see in Africa. So I, I, beg, I beg, we can compare Africa today. <laughs> it's, 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 today we just want to be happy. We are in Plimpton, Wyoming. Plimpton, Wyoming right now. I know say Wyoming Day, US, but this one, uh, Wyoming for Canada. Plimpton, Wyoming, that's where we are at the moment. We're just driving away from the Detroit border, Michigan. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's not it's not easy it's not easy it's not easy it's not easy yeah we've been able to change what uh, visitor's visa to a work permit you know sweet 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 for two different families they don't know each other but hey things just gotta happen and then we got everybody sorted out yeah the immigration officers, they, 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 they stress as well, well they, they, they don't want to do the thing, you know. We have to, we have to use humility and wisdom and, you know, groaning in the spirit to touch their heart, you know. They don't want to do the thing, they, so, so, look, they were looking for reasons to not do it, as, 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 ah, can you imagine? Uh, 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 Daddy, you remember the Niagara Falls man? Yes. Who they tell us, hey, we know if you do one without LMIA, yeah. See, did I argue with him? I, I know I argue. I, huh? I was just telling him it's possible. The man said, no, it's not possible. You cannot get it without. Can you imagine? The immigration officer who is supposed to know better. He said, you know, if you do it. But me, I know say this thing. If you do it, I've been bringing people here. See, once I notice the man, no one help us. He said, okay, don't worry. We'll go another border. <laughs> you don't want to give us. Don't worry. We'll go another border. So long as we want to get this thing done, we'll do it. We drove from there. So which one is the closest border? Detroit, Michigan. So, all right, let's make it. Let's jump on the road. Throughout the, in the middle of the night, we just drove like that. In the middle of the night, my people. If you don't want to do us for Niagara Falls, we go move to another place. And we did. Drove in the middle of the night for several hours, crossing from the south to the east of Ontario to go and get this thing done. You see it? When you need something and you know you deserve it, you get it done. If you go to one place, they say, no, you move to another what? Place. Simple. Huh? I said, 
the Canadian border official there is telling me, no, you, 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 you need to have a job offer. You remember he said that? He said, you need to have a job offer. You need to, we say, okay, that, I, in my head, I say, you are right. You are partially right, but you are not. I didn't challenge you more. This situation is different. It's not it's just a regular visitor visa. A visitor visa of somebody whose wife is a student. Man, you are supposed to make, 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 make that thing quick for that person. We don't need a job offer. We don't need an LMIA for this one. But I didn't argue with him. When the man said, we know if you do, I said, no problem. Come. All we have to do is to Google the nearest border from here. Three and a half hours away, close to four hours. All right. Once you have a car, what do you go do? Challenge. All you go do is you just go enter that car. You just stay on your way. They go the other border. See him? As we go the other border to the stress us, so Americans, the American side is stress us where we can't see them. They, they can't they keep us there for over. Hmm. Say, don't worry. We have all the patience. So if you want us to sleep here today, we'll sleep here. We'll get it done. <laughs> yeah. We'll get it done. We'll get it done today. The Americans are the man to the street forward. Huh? Why are you carrying a lot of people like that? I say, ah. I didn't know. It. I, I didn't tell him this one. No. I want to. In my head, I said, I didn't know it's a crime to come with a lot of people, to come with a family. <laughs> now, why are you coming with them? You know when you come with a lot of them like that, you know, we, 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 you're going to spend more than an hour here, right? I said, ah. And the man kept his word. He made sure we spent more than an hour there. <laughs> At the U.S. side, though, no verse. These are about us, no tire, we go sit. We wait. <laughs> Man, Charlie, 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 it, it was a really, really, really stressful day, but uh, God, God has been good. I'm just so excited that these two families can just go home knowing that their spouses have been able to change their visitor's visa without doing it online to a work permit. Now, whilst they go to school, their husbands can work and support them right support them with that extra school fees money that extra thing you know this is it you don't you don't you don't get this stuff on google you see you will go read them for grammar but that practical wisdom to handle it you need to follow people you need to follow the right people some of the things we dealt with today yeah if not for wisdom first of all wisdom from god yes if not for the Holy Spirit guiding us and our tongue and, and everything. And if not for the Spirit that is directing us in our conduct and everything. We couldn't have done it though. Huh? We couldn't have done it. See one question that the officer asks you. Eh? That officer no one do am for the Canadian side. Eh? For, for this Detroit side, the man no one do am. If he take the question past here, we have an answer. If he pass here, we have an answer for him. He said, okay. But, but you, you cannot do it because you, don't, you, you are planning to work for more than six months in Canada, right? You don't have a medical, uh, you don't, have not done your medical, so we cannot give it to you. And he's right though. For you to stay in Canada for more than six months, you need to have done a medical. So technically, if you're on a visitor's visa, you know the maximum you can stay in the country is six months, isn't it? Then you have to exit. So now that you're trying to change your visitor visa to a work permit, if you do not have a proof of a medical ex examination already done by an RRCC uh, uh, panel physician, technically on that ground, they will just refuse to the, visa, the, the work permit. Because you are trying to get a permit that will allow you to work in Canada for more than six months. But if they look in the system, they don't see no medical exams done, right? So they have the right to say they won't issue you the permit. Ah. This man pulled that particular excuse, oh, say, well, sorry, I won't give it to you because of that. Quickly, my man answered, I've done my medicals. <laughs> the man, you know, he so knows we came prepared. Medicals has already been done. So he said, yeah, you sure? I said, yeah, look in the system, you go see him. We have the proof. You want us to give it to you, we have it. <laughs> huh? Oh, my goodness. They, they, there were so many challenges from every angle. But God gave us the wisdom, especially me. Because I'm just a third party accompanying them, I needed to guard my tongue, I needed to be wise with my choice of words, I needed to use the right intonation, the inflections, making sure I'm not interfering with their work, you know. Because those things can upset them. If they see that somebody is trying to, you know, help you, blah, 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 ah, they will just, you just obsess them and then, you know, 
somebody will try to use their power and tell you that, hey, in fact, I think one of them said, are you trying to teach me my job, right? Yeah, he yeah. didn't say it to me, by the way. Yeah. Well, who did he say it to? Did he say it to you or he said it to my, my big man at the back? Yeah, he, said, yeah. he said it to my man at the back, right? Was it you? He no. said it to you? No. Yeah. To me. Mm -hmm. Good. He was, he was trying to ask that, are you trying to show me my job? With all due respect, we are not trying to show you the job. We are just trying to just say that we have XYZ ready. <laughs> right? But once you do it with that humility, you, you, you conquer them. You conquer their heart. There are some officials, look, they may not be happy issuing you that document. I have to be wise and tactful, you see? Your hand is in the mouth of the person. You're trying to take something from them. And that is, that is what we call wisdom. Wisdom teaches you how to ask for things, right? There are many, many people who do not know how to collect things from people or claim things from people or to ask for things. We don't have the wisdom of asking. We don't have the wisdom of using our tongue. We don't have the wisdom of of, 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 of messaging people so for example there are some people who send me emails or messages that they need help from me and when you read the message it's so rude and you wonder who is trying to help who are they the ones trying to help me or i'm the one they are looking for the help from you know the wisdom of communicating the wisdom of knowing what to say the wisdom of knowing the right words the right intonation the right timing so so important if your hand if your finger is in somebody's mouth you do not go and raise your chest you will become and wiser with your choice of words you are the one looking for the permit they are not the ones looking for it so you better be very wise with your choice of words you cannot be the one who is angry at them if you're angry we see who is going to issue who <laughs> you see and many of us we need the wisdom of asking if you don't get anything at all in this video i want you to have the wisdom do I have the wisdom of approaching Chaka Melonia? Do I have the wisdom of asking for help? Do I contact and comment under his post as if I owe him? Chaka Melonia is nobody, but so long as I'm the one to give you that help, you will learn to respect me. That's a fact. I may not be your CEO, I may not even be a rich person than you, but so long as I'm the one to give you that help you're looking for, you will learn to respect me. Yes. You cannot come to me and be arrogant and look for help from me at the same time. It's not possible. It's not possible. You cannot be asking for help from the same person who, can, who has something you need and be arrogant towards the person. It just doesn't work. That's stupidity. It's stupidity. For a better word, it's unwise. Your hand, the proverb, an African proverb in my local language. Eh? You have to be wise, because the moment you talk anyhow, that person will just close the, the teeth and bite your finger, boom, and you feel it. You see? The wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom of even knowing how to speak to immigration officers. They have the power to make you and unmake you. They have the power to determine what happens to you within a split seconds with a decision. You see it? So we need the wisdom of asking. We need the wisdom. And today one of the things that really happened is the wisdom. The timing. Trust me. The, the frustrations were all over from everywhere. Just imagine going to Niagara Falls, thinking that you could get the help to do this thing, at least 24 hours before the deadline of the policy of changing the business visa and then you go there and then you know so well that these people are eligible for the permit you know not does it look guys there are two kinds of visitors visa holders listen to me when i say listen to me it means i'm making an emphasis there are visitors visa holders of family members in canada who have a valid immigration status and then there are there are visitors visas holder of people who have no families in canada they came by themselves look in the middle of this road on the left hand side you see a truck in the middle when we we're coming you have no idea how many cars we saw running off the road because there was snow this truck just has an accident has gone off the road is in the middle when we were driving throughout the night, there were so many cars we saw that went off the road and were all in the ditch in the middle. Why? Because of snow. But today we are returning with no snow on the road. God is good. God is good.
So I was talking about something. There are two categories of visitors visa holder. A lot of people don't know this. There is a visitor's visa holder who holds that visitor's visa because a family member is the primary reason why they are having the visitor's what? Visa. Can I give you an example? When Chaka Melonier's wife came here first, she came on a visitor's visa. But she only came on a visitor visa because she was coming to visit me, the husband. So I am the primary person, applicant. She is a dependent. She couldn't have gotten that visitor visa holder without me. I'm the one, the basis on which she was coming to Canada. Some of you are coming to Canada because your spouses are international students. You are only getting that visa visa because your spouse is enrolled in a school in Canada. That is why they gave you the visa visa to come and visit your spouse and the family. There is also a second category of visitors visa holder. The one who got a visitor visa because they apply for it themselves without having to rely on any relative. They may have relied on maybe an event like a conference or a program or a workshop or a seminary maybe a pastor's conference or something like all those people who are trying to come now with uh what's the name the nursing conference that we spoke about recently right they are not coming because of a relative in canada they are coming because they want to attend a conference there is also somebody who has also applied for a visitor's visa because they are just coming to visit canada on their own like a tourist they are coming here to explore Canada, right? They are not coming here because they have a married husband or you know, they are coming here because they are just coming to explore. Like one of my followers who is coming from Europe, a Ghanaian coming from Europe, he's not coming here because he has a relative here. He's only coming here because he's coming to explore Canada, to go back, you see? So those are the two categories. Now, if you are coming here for exploratory or an event reason, if you want to change your visitor's visa straight to a work permit, you need to have a full-time job offer. A full-time job what? Offer. If you are coming to Canada, not because of an event, not because of, um, uh, you know, a, a, a conference, not because of a, a football game, not because of a World Cup that is coming up, not because of a pastoral program, not because of, uh, what's the other one, tourism, to come and just explore Canada, to visit and see the beautiful place in Canada. And not because a family member this brought you need a full-time job offer before you can change. In fact, there is also another requirement on top of that. Aside from the full-time job offer, they say you must be able to demonstrate that that job, the employer is giving the permission to bring a foreigner to do that job. That is what we call LMIA. LMIA, which stands for Labor Market Impact Assessment. Labor Market Impact Assessment. LMIA. So those two documents are so important for the person who wants to change their status from a visitor visa to a work permit holder. If they came through an event, if they came on their own without anybody, you know, any family member, bring them in. But here is the other one. The person who came here because they have a wife or they have a husband who is enrolled as an international student in a school that offers programs or courses that are eligible for postgraduate work permit. Listen to this part, very important. Your spouse should not just be a student in Canada or international student in Canada. They ought to be enrolled in a school as full-time student, not part-time, full-time. Number two, aside from being a full-time student who is enrolled, meaning they are registered in school, not be the one who come, they hide around, not they go to school. The one who has actually come and has registered and started school. Number two, the program has to be full-time. Then here is the number three. Very, very important. Listen to this one. Number three, the school your spouse is attending 
or the program your spouse is offering should be a program that leads to getting a postgraduate work permit if that spouse is done with school. So what it means is that if you came here to attend, uh, what's the name of this school? I want to use some schools. Um, Can College, Can College in Canada, Can College, C-A-N, right? Can College is a school in Canada. You can use it to get your visa. Now, if your spouse also uses that same approach to get a visitor's visa to come and visit you, your spouse has met the first requirement of being an international student. Number two, your spouse is also enrolled as a full-time student. But your spouse has not met the third requirement of studying in a school that leads to a postgraduate work permit. Why? Can college does not con uh, offer programs that lead to postgraduate work permit. So you see, in your situation, your husband or your wife who came here on a visitor visa cannot go to the border like we did flag bowling to say they are going to what? Change their status from a visa visa to a work permit. Why? You yourself, the student, your program does not lead to a postgraduate work permit. You are not eligible. Basically, you're, you yourself as a student, you are not eligible for a work permit. So your spouse cannot also get a work permit. You see? Another example of a school. Uh, Toronto School of Management. Toronto School of Management. You know, there are two aspects. There is a Naga College campus on Toronto School of Management. So, when you see the Naga College part, it means you are actually a student on Naga College. But if it's full time admission from Toronto School of Management, if you take your time in reviewing my old videos, you will notice that that school can lead you to get a visa, all right? That school can lead you to enter Canada, all right? That's an international student. But you cannot use it to get your postgraduate work permit. So if your husband later on comes to visit you, your husband cannot go ahead and say, because my wife is an international student, I'm going to change. When you go, they will deny you because they will tell you that your wife is in a school that is not eligible for postgraduate work permit. In fact, this happened last week to somebody that came here to study in a private college, private college, that is not eligible for postgraduate work permit. The wife is not able to get a work permit herself. Uh, and then they went to the border hoping that they can do flap because they heard people say, oh, you can go and change your visitor's visa. But they don't know the details. They don't know the details. So guess what? They went there, boom, they were refused. The man's whole dream crashed. Ah, but you told me if I come from Africa and I come, I'll get work permit. Yes, you didn't know the details. You see it? So, these two categories of visitors visa people who can get work permit. Now, look at the one that we use. The two families that are here, their wives are both international students. Their wives are enrolled as full-time students, not part-time. They are in school, taking courses. They have not disappeared like some people would do and come and not go to school. They are in school, actually. Finally, the schools that they are attending, the programs that they offer, actually lead to postgraduate work permit. So we check all the three boxes there. So in this situation, your husband who is trying to change the visitor's visa does not need a full-time job offer in Canada. Your husband does not need an LMI as well. Your husband is straightforward eligible for what we call an open work permit under the spousa visa column as an international student. So that is what we activated. Now guess what? When we went to the Niagara Falls region to go and get this thing done yesterday, the immigration officer at the Canadian side told us, no, you can't do this. You need to have a valid job offer. You know, but in my head, I knew she was he was referring to the second part of the visitor visa guys. Those that need a job offer. Right? And uh, I tried my best to draw his attention that you can actually do it if your spouse is enrolled as a dinner. But the man wouldn't let me have my way. So, you know, I did try not to worry. You should be able to tell when some people just want to argue and they don't want to, you know, listen to you, right? You should be able to tell when the person has a listening ear or they don't have a listening ear. In fact, there were two ways I tried to draw his attention to a factual error he was making. But he didn't want to have any of it. So, let me give you one of the shameful shameful errors that he made i would say it's shameful maybe he clearly doesn't know you know he clearly maybe he doesn't know i don't think he knew and he was trying to mislead me maybe he clearly doesn't know that is why you cannot assume that everybody knows their job 
Some people are working, but they may not do their job. Now, I told him that the deadline for changing a visa visa per the government of Canada policy is today, 28th of February, it ends today. It started in 2020, where the government was allowing people to change visitor visa to a work permit. And it ends today. The man told me there is no such policy. Do you guys remember? Sure. He said there was no such policy. I, I told him, sir, it, it was actually introduced in 2020. And it ends today, Tuesday. That is why we are trying to get it done today. He said, no, there is no such policy. Then he asked me, can you show me proof? What did I do? I quickly went on my phone, showed him a proof right from the Canadian immigration website. Did he say anything about it? No. He just now started changing the story now mm. to another thing. Right? So me, I'm the one now educating him. But that is the immigration officer. And you see, you still will do this without trying to look like you are, you know too much, isn't it? You do it in a very mature way without making them look stupid. You cannot make the person look stupid when he's the same person who is going to issue your what? <laughs> he's the same person going to issue your permit. You want to make him look stupid? Forget it though. You won't get it though. <laughs> After disgracing him, you go and issue yourself your own permit. <laughs> You know and then he quickly changed the story and then he changed the story and said oh you know what we don't do it on mondays and he's right about that one i knew they do not work on monday we just wanted to give it a try i think when we left home i even told you guys they don't do it on mondays i'm pretty sure but the fact that the deadline was on tuesday which is today we just thought you know what, let's go give it a shot on monday so he used that one and he was able to win the argument he said you know what we, we, we don't we don't do it on mondays we don't we only do it from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at this particular location, which is the Niagara region. And the truth is that anybody that I've assisted by doing a flat pole, we've always done it between Tuesday to Friday. So yesterday was the first time I went there on Monday, right? I knew the chances were high that they wouldn't do it, but we just gave it a shot. So when he said that, we quickly asked him, I asked him, which other border, landed land border is closer? And then he said the one by Detroit, Michigan. Then I said, all right, no problem. We're going to give it a try. He said, well, you're going to make the trip down there? <laughs> and then we said, yeah, we're going to make the trip down there. Then he said, but why not wait till just Tuesday, which is today, to come and do it at Niagara Falls? And then he forgot that he has told us that that place is so busy. <laughs> and I also knew that today is a deadline, meaning the place will be super busy. Everybody will be trying to get theirs done on the last day. You are likely going to arrive on, on in the morning and they will tell you, oh, we are done with our quota for the day. They, they, they say that a lot too. You show up there in the morning and they will tell you, we, we, we are done with our quota for the day, meaning the number of processing that they want to do. They are, okay, so now after that, what are you going to do? It's also the deadline. No, we quickly had to figure out. No, instead of putting our hopes on the deadline day, why don't we move to another word, border point to get it done before the deadline? So we jump on the road. I went through that three and a half plus hours of drive from southern Ontario in Niagara to eastern Ontario, Detroit, Michigan. So sorry, Peter Be Bewa, that you're watching this video. I came really, really close to you. I know you are by Detroit border. We could have called you by man. We, we had so much going on. There was no way we could have. We actually slept in the car, you know, and uh, the challenges were many. The challenges were many. Anyway, finally, we got to Detroit. Went to the U.S. side. Then we had a very, very nosy American official, border official, trying to make our job so hard for us. You know, his problem was why we are many in the car and only two individuals were getting the. So I had to explain to him that this particular application we are about to do in Canada requires the presence of the spouses of the applicants. Without the, them, their wives there, they cannot issue it to them. The, the man still had a problem with that. He, he still had a problem. He, did, he, he said, well, I just don't understand why you're coming with the whole, you know, crew. And I, I, I had to still explain to him that, look, like, I, of course, I wasn't arrogant. I said, this type of application, without their wives with them, they cannot process it for them then. It, it, it just require the presence of your wife. Because your wife is the main reason why you have entered what? Canada. They need to verify that that is actually your wife. They need to verify the proof of marriage and all of that. And without you going with your wife, forget it. They won't give it to you. If you guys have watched my previous video where I took a Ghanaian guy there, you could tell they actually refused us just because the, the, the guy didn't go with the wife. The wife is the international student through whom you came to Canada. So how come you came to the border to make a claim and your, your, main, your main wife or your wife is not here? 
they literally refused us on that day. So don't you think I learned my lesson from that? Sure. We learned. So this now we came with the wives. So that you don't ask, okay, but you said you're married to somebody who is a student. Where is that person? Ah, uh, the person is home. Okay, we need the person physically. How do we transport the person physically there now? But the American guy wouldn't have none of that. And you could tell he was getting a little bit irritated right away. So he told us straightforward that we might spend a little of an hour inside the, the, the American building, you know, what, what we call the holding room, you know. And that holding room, when they take you there, they might just waste your time. It's not, it's not really like they're doing anything. They'll just let you sit down and then they're just looking at their computer, just wasting your time. And they're just sitting down, they're just looking at you, you know. It's, it's so, it's, especially if you're not a Canadian citizen, so just, or if you don't have a visa to enter the U.S. And by the way, we also didn't have a U.S. visa, so that even irritated them. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, you don't have a U.S. visa, you're trying to, you know, enter the U.S. and turn around and go back to Canada, of course. I know we are supposed to have a U.S. visa, but I also know with flat bowling, we don't necessarily need a U.S. visa because we are just doing a U-turn, mm -hmm. you know? We're just doing a U-turn. We don't necessarily need a U.S. visa. We're just doing a U-turn from U.S. back to Canada. It's not like we are going to shop or enter U.S. proper. <laughs> so I knew it was also legal to do that. But anyway, we didn't argue with him. Now, the man kept his word. He didn't tell us what he was actually doing inside, but he made sure we actually stayed inside for more than one hour. And that is the moment that if you are not very patient, you get irritated, you get angry. You are sitting there and you are whining and they are also watching your body language and they will, they will frustrate you even more. But we had all the patience. You know what we did actually? We are sitting there and we are just cracking our own jokes in, 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 in Pigeon, you know? Talking about Tinubu and Opitobi, as Pitobi they sleep, Pitinubu they sleep with they, and they talk about them, you know? Mm -hmm. We are vibing about different things, having our laugh, having our moment. Until they themselves they were tired and they now said, <laughs> Come for your thing and what? Carry go. So they gave us the flat boat documents finally after an hour. Then we got to Canada. Thinking that finally we are back home in Canada. Then the Canadian officials also processed us and told us to enter their building. We entered their building. The officer who was processing us, this was about 2 a.m., right? Between 2 to 3 a.m. Yes. The officer who was processing us, you could tell he was a little bit not friendly. A little bit not friendly. You could tell. You know, sometimes when you watch how people talk, you can tell if they are friendly people or they are not, you know? When they don't give you a chance to even speak, you can tell right away, like, these people are not going to make it easy for you. So you need a little bit of wisdom to handle them. And uh, basically what happened, question after question, question after question, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? You are, don't have your medicals. We can't let you do it. Oh, you are trying to work for more than six months, which means that you are no longer wanting to be a visitor. And But of course, that's what we're doing. Work permit. We want to work, man. <laughs> Who wants to go back in six months, you know? Then, oh, you, you have not done your medicals. You know, if you want to stay in Canada for more than six months, you need to. And then one particular question that was even asked, you know, and I think I could have done a better job by letting my people know that they were going to be asked that question. I just didn't think that, I didn't, I, it didn't occur to me to tell them that they should expect this kind of question, you know? So this question was asked, which industry do you plan on working in Canada? And uh, my, 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 one of my brothers didn't really know how to answer that question well because they were looking for a specific answer. Canada has so many industries. So if we get you, if we give you the work permit, which particular industry do you want to work now the reason why they are asking you this is that you know there are two types of work permit open work permit and a closed work permit now open work permit allows you to work with any company of your choice without a restriction a closed work permit limits you to working with just a particular employer you see now the type of open permit that they are getting to work falls under what we call a spousal open work permit. A spousal open what? Work permit. Now, you might think it is irrelevant for him to ask which industry you want to work, but from an immigration point, it makes sense that he also wants to know where you plan on working. So when this question came, because my brother was not prepared for it, he didn't know how to answer it. And the man kept just pushing and probing, where do you want to work? And we stumbled a bit and you know i was standing far away i don't have to get too close 
to look like I'm interfering with the process, right? So I'm just listening and I'm just standing behind. You know what I mean? Standing behind, just keeping an eye and watching with that one eye like that. You see, I'm there. And uh, we, he struggled with the question there, but I, uh, I, I, and then in my head, I was thinking, I said, okay, I think I understand why. Because there are some industries that you cannot work, even if you have an open work permit. For example, you cannot work in what we call the sex industry. The sex industry, those people that do escort, the strip club, and all of that, you can't do it. Now, it's not up to the officer to assume that you don't have intentions of doing that kind of job. It's his job to try and figure out where you want to work. So that if he's actually in one of those industries that you cannot work, <laughs> he's able to use that as a basis to deny you. You know what I mean? So you have to be smart in telling them, you know what? Uh, maybe I'm looking for just a general labor job, factory job customer service job you know those ones are just basic you don't you can just throw them in like an industry of customer service but because we didn't think of this kind of questioning early we struggled or he struggled with it and uh, basically finally the last part we need a proof of a marriage proof of marriage show us proof that you're married so how do you do that marriage certificate isn't it that was said the devil was showing up real good. <laughs> Guess what happened? My sister did not have the marriage certificate ready in a folder on the phone or as a document. Even though I had mentioned this ahead, it looks like the planning did not capture this particular one. So the marriage certificate was difficult to pull. And guess what? There, they are not allowing you to use the Wi Fi there. Okay, let me explain. When you arrive in a Canadian airport, there is free Wi-Fi. You can use it, isn't it? Okay, now you are the Canadian landed border. Even though they have Wi-Fi there, they will not give you to the public. So you have to use your own Wi-Fi. Now, for most people as well, your internet will start messing up the moment you are at the US-Canada border. It begins to treat you as if you are on roaming, as if you are in US, you know what I mean? And then your internet begins to misbehave and will not work properly and all of that unless you turn on your data roaming and if your network is even the one that is a little bit limited beyond the border it may not even work so you try and connect to your internet and then your internet is just not working and here you are trying to enter your documents or your mail trying to pull your your marriage certificate from your mail that part really stressed us but god was good uh because i have more than one cell phone one of my cell phones i'm able to quickly connect and switch to a canadian uh, internet so I quickly switched my internet and then I had to hotspot I had to hotspot my my my, my internet to uh, for, for, for them to connect their laptop to it so they can use it to enter their mail and pull out document right so I hotspot my internet and then guess what happened the phone that was doing the hotspot that I was using to share my internet to, to my, my colleagues in this car right that phone, the battery was also showing 7%. Oh my goodness, 7% battery. Here I am. I did not also carry the charger of that particular phone in the car. And that battery, no day strong. It'd be like, say, China battery, don't hit them. You know, the battery runs. Before you even get to two minutes, the 7% has turned to 3%, you know? It runs so fast. So here I was, praying that this woman will quickly enter her mail and quickly pull the marriage certificate or download it before the battery dies. Because if that battery dies, there is no way I'm going to connect my other phone. The other phone just doesn't connect well in the U.S. Yeah, we are the U.S. border. He was treating us as if we were in Detroit or we have entered Michigan. Wow. We're racing. Thankfully, somebody that came with us had a power bank from Nigeria. Niger Power Bank don't do magic. <laughs> the person brought power bank from Nigeria that could charge both Android and iPhone. I said, oh yeah, go and bring that thing from the car. Went to the back, brought it. Quickly connected the power bank. Huh? As a thing, they charge 2%, 3%. We they try the go through folder after folder, looking for it in the mail. Looking for what? Marriage certificate though. That is why it's always good to go prepared though. That's why it's always good to go with all your documents. So you don't go there now and now you are now looking for something in your mail. When your internet decides to mess you up, you could do it in a witchcraft way called the Charlie, you know easy. All right, guys, we are officially in the city of London, Ontario. London, Ontario, guys. You know there is also London in Canada, yeah. Not only UK. We have London and Ontario. We are currently in the city of London, Ontario. 
where we have a school like uh, University of Western Ontario, where we have a school like uh, Fanshawe College, Fanshawe, F-A-N-S, uh, H-A, you see there is even an airport here called London International Airport, you just saw it on the signboard, we are currently in London, Ontario, the population is almost 400,000, population is almost 400,000, we are currently in London, Ontario. And this is actually, by the way, my first time in London, Ontario, by the way. So if you live in London, Ontario, sorry, I can't get up the road to see you guys just passing through, you know. Um, wow, internet wahala. All right, so power bank has been connected. At least the phone is stable now. Get into your mail and find that marriage certificate that you have in PDF or in document folder. My people, the next trouble started. As, as my sister, started looking into her mail for marriage certificate marriage certificate doesn't want to show ah. we kept looking and looking and looking we know the fee find marriage certificate ah. and then she kept saying ah, but it is always here in this no but she kept looking she just couldn't find a marriage certificate you know when you are under pressure yeah that is where everything will look like you cannot see it though when you are under pressure it's not good to be under pressure but not you see when you're under pressure the thing could be right there but you may not even be seeing it and you just keep looking and looking and right there my sister just started singing some gospel songs you know she's a very spiritual woman right she just started calming her nerves down by singing some gospel song i could tell spiritually she was just putting this under control you know yeah just going through and the official the canadian border official was just sitting down waiting for that marriage certificate now for those who don't know what this means in psychology yeah when you have a long dead air what do I mean by dead air? A long period of, they have asked you for a document and it's taking you more than usual time to bring the document up. One of two possibilities. Some officials may start doubting that you actually have a genuine or a valid document. Some officials may say, you know what, it's a tech issue. Maybe you're having a technology issue. They understand. But if you have a very, very suspicious official, right there and there, imagine you arrive at the airport. They ask you for your letter of admission and then it's taking you 15 minutes you cannot find it mm. you see some officials may think that you actually are not who you say you are another official may say that okay you are under duress you're under pressure you're under something let's give the person they will even try and come in but if, if you have a very unwise or uh, let me say a very nasty official they may try and turn that situation into something that will even make it look like you are not who you are you know what i mean so I was just in there praying that this official will just have the patience and wait for us whilst we are doing our thing and looking for the marriage certificate. And he kept waiting and he kept waiting and he kept waiting and we kept searching. It took more than 10 minutes, guys. We kept looking. The husband was also looking through his WhatsApp to see whether he has ever sent the marriage certificate through WhatsApp, through, you know. They, they just kept looking and, and the thing was just not showing. It, it, they were looking in the mail. It wasn't showing. Finally, she found it in the mail. When she found it, opening it too became another problem. Hi, as you click on now, the thing they load, it gets to that place now. You know, they load for you to read the document. Say, which Kawahala did this? <laughs> anyway, eventually we were able to get it done. And then we got the document and showed it to the official. Finally, we have the marriage certificate. Here is a copy of it. They accept the electronic copy, by the way. It's always recommended that you come with the original if possible. Put the original in your file, right? If for some reason you don't have the original, no problem, have the soft copy ready. Don't get there and be looking for internet to do. download it. Let it be in your phone folder, right? Ready to open. No, be now where they go look for internet to me. I'm telling you, okay, go there and tell me you have internet in Canada. Go to US border. When US border begins to kick your internet out, you see whether you know. Border, border point is always a risky place for internet to do. Because you see, the internet has a way of treating you as if you are in a foreign country. And then it just begins to mess you up meanwhile you may technically be in canada but he may not recognize that you are in canada he sees you that you've entered detroit michigan and then he begins to misbehave and then you know frustrate you when you really need it so i'm telling you this from experience if you know you are going to do a soft copy of your document my brother do not rely on your internet when you get to the border download all of that stuff and put it in a folder ready to open even if it is in off off offline mode ready to open when you need it all right so we opened and gave the thing to the man. What next? All he's supposed to do, that was the final document he was looking for, by the way. And we've given it to him. He's observed it. It's all good. So all he's supposed to now do is what? 
to basically just say that you know what okay i'm approving the work permit for your husband uh you guys can go ahead and make the payment for 250 dollars or whatever it is and then come back and get a work permit that's it that's it now guess what happened now when it got to the point of actually making the decision of printing out the permit or telling us to make the payment and then boom guess what happened the system was down what system the IRCC system at the border official side was down. Wow. For me, I was surprised that just at that moment, he said the system was down, meaning he cannot do anything. The computers are, the system, the website is not connected. Then he explained to me that you know that they normally do maintenance of the website between 12 a.m. to sometimes 4 or 5 a.m. And the truth is, he is right. Normally, Canadian immigration will be maintaining their website in midnight from midnight from 12 a.m when people are sleeping that's the time that you see them you know so if you've been following them on twitter sometimes you see them write that hey between 12 midnight to 4 a.m our website is going to be not accessible and basically that was the time range we were trying to get this thing printed so once the officer said the system was down guys at that point there is nothing he can do about it wow so we asked him is it okay for us to sit and wait until he comes back? He said, no, we cannot keep waiting here. We have to leave. And you know, the border point is a security zone. You cannot just be idling around like that, you know. If you have no business, they will tell you to leave and then come back. Wow. What does leave mean? It means we have to technically leave that whole place and enter the, the nearest Canadian city or the city is there. Wow. We now have to leave. And then he said we should come back in the morning. This was 3 a.m. by the way. He said we should come back in the morning. What time? 8 a.m. He said, you know what? If the system is back online, he can do it for us. So at least he's giving us his word that he'll do it for us. All we need to do is to make sure the system is back, isn't it? Somebody said the camera, uh, the camera is blurry, so yeah, there was a bit of... Let me see if it's better now. Sorry about that if the camera is blurry. Hopefully it gets better. Okay, it's, it's better now. I've wiped it with some... All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you for commenting, huh? I've seen it, thank you. I think it's better now. Wow, man, that, that place weak me, oh. When the system was done, the team weak me, well, well, hot, you know? So we had to now leave that place and go and drive in sound, you know, Sanya, which is the nearest city. We drove inside Sanya. We are now enjoying middle of the night, 3, 4 a.m. We are now just driving around. Now we had to now go and find a place to park our vehicle and stay in the car. We went to park at a coffee shop, Tim Hortons, you know, and we just, it's not like the coffee shop was open, they are closed, but we just had to park in that public place, just sit in our car quietly, and everybody's just tired, we don't even know whether to sleep or not to sleep, we don't know, and you can see that everybody's looking just frustrated. Guys, from 3 a.m., we were just there in the car, watching the clock, watching the clock as the clock was counting down, waiting for that morning to come, you know? Now, I decided to go and test it. Something was telling me that the busiest time is normally in the morning when you have a lot of Indians, especially a lot of our Indian people who also are trying to do the same flaco. Normally, that's the time that you see a lot of them also come from Brampton, Toronto, to this the Detroit, Michigan border, trying to do the same thing that we are also trying to do. So something was telling me that instead of going at eight, why don't you go a little bit earlier to see if the system is back? Because on their website, if they do their maintenance of their website, they normally do it between 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. So something was telling me that, why don't you go back around 5 a.m. to see if it is working? So around 5 a.m., I called everybody and said, okay, let's go back to the border. Now we went to the border. This time around, we decided to be a bit smart by not entering the United States side. We just stopped at the duty-free zone where you can do currency exchange on the Canadian side. Then we parked there. All of us didn't come out. And then I told the, 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 my people that they should go inside. I'll be in the car. They should go inside and go and check and see whether the system is back and they are able to do without us having to go to the United States first. So they went inside and then they said, no, we have to come back. In fact, they didn't even say the system was back. Oh. They just said, you have to come back. Police has put somebody. Guys, watch on your right-hand side. Watch on your right-hand side. Police has put somebody. Did you just see it? Mm. Police has put. Now that car, does it look like a police car? No. It looks like just a private car, isn't it? Sure. But that's a police, isn't it? Yes. That is why in this country, you don't wait for a police officer to do the right thing. Any car you see on the road could be a police officer. You could even see a truck, regular truck, with nothing written on it, it could be a police car. Mm. 
You don't wait to me. I've told you, if you come here, be looking for police car before you do the right thing. When the police will see it. <laughs> All right. Uh, where is the other phone that has? Okay, let me just see how many more kilometers we have for an exit. Oh, 30, 39 kilometers. We're good. You are my GPS. You are my yes. GPS. Yeah, you are watching the GPS. 39 kilometers more. Yang Kong Kwan. Guys, for the record, for the avoidance of doubt, this is how a proper highway looks like. No traffic, no U turn, no crisscrossing. Gee, you see, I'm just a go like that. Anyway, that's not the topic. So let me see before people start investing me. People start to me for that. All right, so this guy is trying to compare Canada and Africa again. I said, okay, I'm sorry, you. let me just go on before you guys start to me. Let me deliver my information. All right, so we went back at that 5 a.m. and it didn't work. They basically, I think when we went there, we met the same person that said the system was down, right? That's that's the one you guys met, right? No. And then, was it the same person or a different person? Met a, met a different person before the former president. Oh, the other person has finished his shift. No, he was inside. He was still there. Yes. But another person attended to you, and he said that we should come at uh, 8 a.m. Yes. So he didn't line. even say that the system was back, but he just said we should come back at 8. Wow. So 5 to 8, that's another three hours of going back to sleep. <laughs> and uh, God knows I, I wasn't sleeping. I was just in the car. Everybody was sleeping. Nobody was snoring. I can assure you that nobody snored. <laughs> and uh, we're just in the car like that and, you know, waited for another three hours. And then we came back. We tried to use the same strategy of not going inside the US properly. You know how they've designed a flagpole here? Yeah? Flagpole has been designed in such a way that you have to enter the United States and do a U-turn from the United States to return into Canada. So when we went at 8 a.m., we're trying to beat that one by just trying to park on the Canadian side. Some of us will stay in the car and those who are going to actually do the change of uh, uh, visitor visa, we just go inside whilst we stay in the car so that it doesn't look like we actually have abandoned the vehicle there and then they come and look whose car is this, blah blah blah. So I stayed in the car, and then when they went inside at eight, the Canadian official said, You know what? Unfortunately, we cannot allow you guys to just walk to the Canadian side like that. You have to go to US and come back from the US, you know. And they try and say, You know what? We came here earlier, you guys said the system we should come at eight, you print it for us. They said, No, 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 guys. For Flatpool, you got to enter the United States and come back. So basically, they were telling us, hey, you are trying to cut corners by coming to Canada straight from Canada. It doesn't work that way. Enter the United States. Let the U.S. release you back to Canada. Wow. So we went back to U.S. And thankfully, the people that we met there, in fact, the U.S. official that we saw this time around said, oh, you again, you guys are back. Then we said, yes, this is what happened. We said, well, we've been here all night because the Canadian side, the system was down and they wanted us to come in the morning we didn't want to go back to niagara so you know we were just hanging around at the coffee shop so coffee shop i said yeah coffee shop <laughs> the man just started feeling empathetic towards us we met a really good u.s official this time around i think he was inside the building not at the border point itself not not inside the booth was inside the building so he recognized us right away and he's a very good person you can tell he's an elderly person who's very good so he walked us from his booth to thankfully the time that we went to his booth was the same time that his shift was also what ending and he was swapping his shift with another u.s border official who is coming to enter his boat so this man left his boat and took us inside the building of the united states and then went to tell his colleagues ahead of time that these people have already been here we could figure out that he said he was going to talk to them that we've already been here basically to tell them so that they don't stress us that they stressed us before you know like over that one hour again and the man did really really good he went he talked to them you can tell this time they didn't stress out they didn't ask us all those unnecessary you know and in just some few minutes not too long they released us and said you know what directed us and say take this document for flagpole get back to canada and then they directed us and then boom we we're back in canada and then when we went inside canada we were hoping not to run into an official inside the canadian side who will make our stuff difficult for us so we're praying Everybody in the car was just praying in their spirit that God would lead us to the right person. And guess what? God came through, led us to a very, very elderly person. What, what could be that man's age? Can somebody guess? The man that took care of us. 50s, late 40s. Late 40s. Late 40s. The man is such a sweet man, you know? No unnecessary questions, just sweet, no probing. And then he just he just did his thing and 
you know i try not to interfere i'm just standing in the background just watching what is going on so that the line of questioning is something that is too difficult i can figure out if it's gonna you know like i was just standing in the background just watching and hey i told one of the families to go in first and go and get theirs done because i figured their situation was more more easier so they went in the questioning was easy confirm your school why are you here blah 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 all those questions answered it nicely are you enrolled in school yes can we see proof can you open your your student portal for for, for 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 me to see that you are really in school okay are you do you have any grace posted so far by your professors you know wow so this is it though if you are not really enrolled you know they'll find out because when they ask you to show your portal which portal are you going to show <laughs> which portal are you going to show they said they want to see whether you are really in school you said your wife is a student isn't it so open portal they want to see grace they want to see your timetable they want to see your classes they want to see your class attendance they open it and you see because we came with all the documents everything was easy right there now oh my goodness my sister my evil woman if 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 you don't enter, say yes i can have it you want and then her canadian accent started coming out say yes <laughs> my nigerian sister's canadian accent started coming out you can tell her canadian accent started coming out she said okay i'm gonna open it for you she said okay then the man said, can I see your class attendance? He said, okay, I have it here. Oh, I even did a class yesterday on Zoom. It's right here. You know? Okay. Can I see this? Then she opened it. Then the man now said, okay, can I have your laptop? Can, can you slide your laptop under the, the counter table for me? The, the, how to bend that laptop was another problem. <laughs> because the counter, you see, you have to pass it underneath the glass. And then we have to now run the laptop. Because he wants to actually see it for himself. He wants to open it for himself. Now he now open it and after we pass the laptop to him and he open it guess what the man said the man said you know what i, I don't understand none of this stuff yet so now now my sister now had to tell me you know what this, this is here this is here this is where my attendance is this is where my courses are this is where my classes are this is my timetable i was even in a class yesterday i was even this uh so the man said you know what i got it i got it i got it then when he finished when he finished guys when i say this one say again if you are watching it just say again the man now said, okay, can I have your proof of marriage to show that you are married to this man here? So I quickly turned and asked my sister, I told you to download it when we did the first one that gave us trouble earlier, three hours ago. Did you download it? She looked at me and smiled. That's smile simply means Peter had betrayed me. You know Peter in the Bible and Jesus? Right away I could tell she forgot to do it. I smiled back at her and said, you didn't do it, right? Meaning we are going to go through that same struggle of finding that marriage certificate again. Wow. There and there, power bank has to come in again, oh. Power bank, battery is still running low, isn't it? Now we have to now go back to that power bank. Money to get some percentages, hotspot my internet again. Went back into the mail, trying to look for that marriage certificate. You see the mistake we made again? When we found it the first time, what should we have done? either one send it to yourself as a mail so that you can easily see it when you go to your sent folder or hit the download button to download it or you know but, but we, we just you know i think when the man said the system was down he just shut our brain down and everybody was just disappointed so we didn't now we have to go through the same stress of looking for that marriage certificate again in gmail oh and you know when gmail want to mess you up you can mess you up you'll be running a search looking for marriage certificate when you really want to mess you up when you need it eh? hmm wow but again the man was so patient he wasn't rushing us we were waiting then the husband too asked me quickly uh choco can i tap into your internet i say yes he too went on his whatsapp he was searching the wife was also searching using his lap uh, laptop and when we kept searching searching nobody was finding it though nobody was finding it though the man was searching the wife was searching the man was searching marriage certificate marriage certificate no day <laughs> wow and then she gave me a glimpse of hope and said, Choco, I think I found it. We began opening, 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 opening. Now, now, now proof of something else. Oh, no be marriage certificate though. <laughs> I don't know whether that one was proof of land document or whatever, but it was something else. We kept searching again. Then, guess what happened? The other official, the old man said, um, what is your date of marriage? The old man asked the woman, what year did you guys get married? And then the woman answered, this month and this day in 2009. And then the man quickly said, I think I've seen it in our system. Look at what the man said. The man said, I think I see it in our system. How did he see it? He was able to see it from the application you submitted from Nigeria. Because you added your proof of marriage, isn't it? 
So he, whilst he was waiting on us, had already gone into their IRCC portal and was able to pick that information. So guess what he did? He asked for you to verify your date of marriage. If you had given a wrong date of marriage, it should not come right away. Yes. But the moment the woman mentioned it, it synchronized with what the man was also seeing. And the man said, I think I found a marriage certificate in our system. Guess what also happened here? The moment the man said, I think I found it, my, my, my sister also said, I just also found it in my mail too. And then the, the husband also said, I also just found it on my WhatsApp. Oh, everybody was finding it at the same time. What a timing. And then we all laughed over it, smiled. And then right there we knew everything was done. The marriage proof was the last thing. Wow. And then, what did the man say? I think he said that you can have a seat. I'm going to call you to go and do the payment for me to issue the permit for you. Then right there and there we knew everything was good. So we sat down and we're just vibing. Then I was trying to tell them, don't start celebrating. They'll be looking at us through the glass. Keep it cool. Keep it cool. <laughs> All right, and then they called later on and said, time to go and make the payment. So we went, made the payment, $250 for that work permit. And yes, they issued the work permit finally to the husband. So they called the husband and I think the wife also joined. No, the wife didn't join. It was just a $255 actually. That's it. She just, I just got a confirmation. It's $255. $255 for the work permit. $255. Yeah. Guys, listen to this part, this part. This part is so interesting. Listen to it too. All of these, they are practical examples of people's experience. You won't find them on Google. Oh. You won't find anybody detailing this thing in writing. Oh. After people get it, everybody's going home. Oh. Nobody's going to put their experience online like this. Oh. So detailed. So sometimes you have to listen to people's experiences and you pick one or two wisdom from it. When you also find yourself in a situation, you know exactly how to handle such questions, you know? Now, the man has now issued the work permit. He is required by the immigration law to read out the conditions of the work permit to you. So he began reading the conditions. You are allowed to work with any company except the sex industry, like being an escort, being a stripper, you know, all those ones. So, at least we know this man is not going to be a stripper. He has a wife here now. No problem. Hmm? But the man has to still read that in condition for you. Okay. And then he also said that you are not allowed to enroll in a school whilst on this type of permit. You cannot enroll in a full-time school yourself whilst you are on this kind of permit and your wife is in school. And that is also something that is true. I understand it. So for me, I would have just said yes, sir. And then when the man finished, he has a question. Do you have any questions? You know, uh, I would have loved for my Nigerian brother to say no questions, sir. Thank you. But the man has a question. The question that he asked began to lead to a back and forth. Oh my goodness. So we're now viewing and watching them as if they were doing a back and forth like a, some kind of argument. And I say, ah uh ah. -uh. In my head, I'm just saying, I hope the man has not changed his mind about the work permit. Oh. You know, we're looking at you inside. Oh. We're really looking at you inside. We say, okay, we hope the man has not changed his mind about issuing the work permit. Oh. What is going on? You know, so guess what happened? When the official asked the, my brother, my senior brother, Okay, you are not allowed to work in the sex industry. You are not allowed to be enrolled in a school because you are not a spouse, open work permit. And read all of that and said, do you have any questions? You asked the question. What was the question you asked? I wanted to say it just, what was the question? <laughs> I said, why, why can't I enroll in a school with the work, uh, work permit? So he asked the question, why can't I enroll in a school? And I could see that why he was asking the question, he was using his hands to make the gesture. The gesture was like, why can I not? You know that kind of, how do I even use my hand? Let me, let me see if you guys can, mm, let me see if you guys can see the gesture. Like this, why can't I work with the open work permit? You know that kind of gesture, right? So that kind of gesture that will make the immigration officials to start looking, okay, are you, maybe in his head he's thinking, are you really planning to go to school? Are you going to it? <laughs> You know, <laughs> but but according to him, when he came, we asked him. I think his wife asked him right away that what was going on, what was going on there. And then he said, the, the man said, I cannot go to school. With this. So I was asking him, why can't I go to school? And for me and the wife, we're thinking, you okay, shouldn't have asked that question. You should have just said, thank you, daddy. You know, God bless you. And then we go. We just, we just want to leave this place. That's all. But when he asked the question, the man had to now explain further. And, uh, you know, there is nothing about asking. But 
the most important thing you want to pick from this is that you have to know when the battle is over for you to close the what chapter you don't want to be asking a question that begins to give them an impression that you have a different what agenda you know what i mean some questions when you begin asking they are now thinking about okay but you just told me okay let me ask you this let me ask you this so yaya harun has a wife in Canada. I'm just using an example. Yaya Harun, who is what, whose name is on the screen right now, has a wife in Canada who is an international student. Yaya has also been able to get a visitor's visa to come and visit the wife. Now, Yaya arrives in Pearson, Toronto Airport or Montreal. Now, the official who is processing Yaya in as a visitor begins to read the conditions of the visitor visa. That as a visitor visa, you cannot stay for more than six months in Canada continuously. As a visitor's visa, you are not allowed to take on a job in Canada. As a visitor, we cannot also work in the sex industry. And then Yaya begins to ask the question, but why can't I work in Canada? Why can't I work in the sex industry? Okay, me, if I'm a border official right there, I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Is that really what you want to do? You see, you haven't said it, you are just asking a question, but some questions may give the impression that Especially maybe the, the way and manner you put the question could tell the person that, you know, it, look, they ask you a question as an international student. You know, as an international student, you cannot overstay in Canada. After your study, you need to return. What do you say? You say, yes, please. You know, you don't now go and ask the question, why can't I stay longer in Canada? But when people can, they get PR and they get the citizenship. Why can't I? That question simply shows that you do not understand. <laughs> So basically, basically, when my brother asked that question, that is how the officer may have viewed it. But you know, remember we said this officer is a very sweet officer. He didn't make a big deal out of it. He just took time to actually explain to him that you are not allowed to do X, Y, Z because of this, you know. And he didn't make, I'm pretty sure if it was a different kind of officer, he would have made a big deal out of it, you know. That maybe you are planning to do some other things aside from, you know. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I think one of them got asked this question that you said you were visiting Canada. Why have you changed your mind now? I think they asked you that question, right? Was it, was it you or they, they, asked, they asked one of you that question? But your original plan said you are visiting, so why have you now changed your mind? And yeah. you now have to come with a, a better re reasoning and say, you know what, initially my plan was just to visit and make sure my family or my wife arrives and settles and finds accommodation and my children who are accompanying all settled properly. But later on, you know, when I came, and uh, I found out that, you know, the workload in school and managing with the children is too much. I just decided to stay a little bit, maybe a few more months to, you know, help them through with their transition. And after that, I can what? I, I can I can just get back. You see, that's a very smart answer. You, you, you don't have to you don't have to be so explicit in telling them, hey, uh, why don't I have to work? I have the right to work. So, you know, when you begin to do that, it looks like you are going to argue with them and then you know some better officials may just stretch it like chewing gum you know and then they make a big deal out of it and you know what happened right so just just be smart when you are answering questions know when not to follow up know when to say yes sir you see the person who says yes sir or thank you is the person who knows that the battle is over or the document has been issued that's not the time for you to just do some kind of follow-up that will open another word you know conversation for another 30 minutes you know what i mean and then yeah basically that is it that is it and it got issued and then the second family you know i said two different family the second family also went in theirs was actually more 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 quicker and faster you know no unnecessary questioning went in made the payment job was done and hey finally we're out when everybody got the permit we just started hugging each other there now we've gotten it so we're hugging for them to know we're hugging each other we're just hugging inside we felt like dancing there. I felt like doing a live broadcast inside their building because officially we are done, you know, and uh, came in the car and then here we are. I hope you've learned, you've learned a thing or two from this experience. Flag pulling is possible, but you have to understand your, whether you meet the eligibility requirement. Sometimes I see people who have visitor visa. They don't have any relative here. They don't have any wife. They don't have any husband who is in school. And they just kind of say, well, we heard Chuck or say, uh, we heard Chuck say you can change Vista, but no, the truth is they didn't pay attention. They don't. They chose the part of my video they want to listen to, right? For them, my videos are too long. They won't listen to all these details. And they, they, they'll go and they'll make a mistake. Because we live in an era where people are just not interested in listening now. People want to pick what they want to hear and then they move with it, right? 
I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a very long one, but I hope you've learned a thing or two. I encourage you to share this. I hope I have a befitting title that can make people recognize this particular video. Some of you might be here on visitor's visa. Some of you might be here on different kinds of visas. In fact, uh, there were a lot of visitor's visa videos that we we're going to do. One of our own colleagues here, a follower, who came on a visitor's visa, does not have a wife here in Canada who is in school, just came on a regular visit to explore Canada, has successfully been able to secure a full-time job offer in Canada in the city of Hamilton, which is actually where we are driving right now. We are actually around the Hamilton area right now, right? And the employer did not demand any money. The employer offered that person that particular document called LMI, Labor Market Impact. And the person was able to just go to the border like that with these two pieces of document, job offer and the LMI, and was also able to change it without stress. Basically, these same things that some of our African brothers will be trying to sell to people 10,000, 15, 20, 30, 40, see how somebody got it, right? But hey, I'm not trying to tell you it's easy. It requires time to actually go online and find those companies. It requires time to find the right company. It requires time to put your CV together. It requires time to keep adapting and changing your CV to fit the job. It, it, it comes with work. It comes with work. It might not be easy for you, but hey, if you keep sowing them seeds, one of them might just give you the job, right? And if you keep following the right people, picking the tips every day, you know, you might not get... Have you ever, have you, have you really paid attention to how my videos are? In every video I make, there is a wisdom that is drawn. They look like fresh dew or fresh honey every day, isn't it? Whatever you got from this today, you may not have gotten from my other flagpole video, isn't it? There are always new nuances. There are nuances to every video. That is why when you're following somebody, you have to be really, really thorough. Because there is always a new development. There is always a new experience of somebody. There is always something we knew. In fact, there is something I myself, I learned that I didn't know. I didn't know. So when I learn it, I come and share. And it's up to you to also update your information. When you also learn something, we have the immigration is so dynamic. It keeps changing. People's experiences keep changing. Somebody's experience at maybe an airport can just change the way you also prepare yourself. But if, if you are not updating yourself, if you are not following people well, and if you are just looking for a quick two, three minutes video, you're going to get them on YouTube, all right? I'm sorry. You know there are two, three, four, five minutes videos on YouTube. You're going to watch them with all those adverts blasting on your face, and they will tell you to subscribe. And when you finish, you ask yourself what you really have learned. You've been hopping from two, three minutes videos, and none of them is really teaching you practically. Because everybody wants to just get your attention to watch a video. You see it? I hope you've gotten something out of this. I really don't want this video to be long. If you guys want me to end it, I can end it. If you think you are enjoying the drive time, I can just keep the camera on like that. Right. But as many of you who want me to end it, please con just comment down there and I'll end the video so that you guys can just have a good one. If you want me to continue as well, just drop your comments and let me know if you want me to just continue going. Otherwise, I could end it here and then we'll enjoy our ride, okay? So just to let you know, we've been on this road for several hours, far away from home sleepy sleepy eyes everybody's eyes are you know what i mean everybody if i turn my camera you see my eyes are red you see it uh-huh and this is the kind of investment we are making in our people not because of the money we're going to make not because of anything but because we want everybody to really succeed you see so it requires a lot of wisdom to know how to connect with me you cannot be sending me email and be arrogant at me i don't respond to messages so when i'm here burning myself helping one of our brothers and sisters you cannot be telling me me i don't help Ghanaians, so because you see a nigeria in my car when you are stupid enough to miss all those videos where Ghanaians are sleeping in my house yesterday i read a comment from a Ghanaian woman very stupid mature woman very stupid mature woman as you say say choco is it only nigerians that you help now you stupid fool have you been watching my videos do you know how many Ghanaians have slept in my house huh do you know how many Ghanaians have slept in my house ate from my house slept in my house for free do you know how many are there you're stupid enough to just make a conclusion. It's only helping Nigeria. Naive one. Thank God I held my breath and I didn't answer you in a certain way. Huh? You pour yourself out and somebody will just come and put stone in your gary one morning. Hmm. God is giving us more and more wisdom. You know when I'm, in, I'm not in the right spirit, I'll fire you in the comment section where well. You go and you'll not come back. These days I don't even talk. Oh. Some of you, you have not even realized you've been blocked. You keep loading chocolate millionaire, I won't show. You've been blocked because of a very nasty comment. Now I've learned to use it too. Yesterday, do you know how many people I blocked? About five people. Now I don't even comment. I don't even waste my energy too. You just say, I just hit them. In the past, I used to leave all those people. They'll be draining your energy. Now I don't. 
you make a very stupid, unintelligent, and wise, an ill intended message or comment. I will just go and click the wrong. Boom. You keep searching Chuck Millennial, you will not find it. Unless you go and change your profile. In fact, I block you in such a way that when you create any other one with something that shows from the old, you are blocked already. So that you will learn to appreciate good people when you come across them. How naive will you be that you won't watch my old videos to see whether it is only Nigerians who come to my house? How naive? When I've had Ghanaians slapped in my house for more than a month without paying a damn, you didn't see that one. Isn't it? We are just people who like to divide. Does it matter to even mention Nigerians? Are they not human beings for God's sake? Are they not human beings for God's sake? Must you mention a nationality? You fool. I'm waiting for somebody to come and put a nationality on my videos here. You see me fire you well, well. And on top of that, I'll block your tongue. So you can go and look for your tribal pages that promote and help people from that country. Not me. I help human beings. I don't help nationalities. I help human beings. Don't tell me you are not seeing me help a Kenyan. Show me a Kenyan who came to me and I sent him away. Show me a Kenyan who ever called me and said I need help. And Choco said I don't help Kenyans. Human beings come to me. God sends them my way and I help them. Change your mindset. We are not here for countries. We are here for human beings who deserve a chance. That's all. The gospel did not teach me the gospel, the Bible did not teach me to love Ghanaians only. So I should love all human beings just as myself. Hmm? All right. Thanks so much for being with us. I hope so on they see proper highway. Sometimes when I make my post, you need to be in my shoe to understand. This is where we want Africa to be. Some people are watching right now. They say this highway did correct. Though. You never see any. Go to Dubai. You see better highway. Go to Singapore, go to Malaysia, you even see better highway. Go to Japan, you go see even better highway. The one where you can roll your stomach on it. You know? Yeah. This is what we call highway. My people, this is what we call highway. No traffic light, no damn stop sign, no damn YouTube, no, no, no damn U turn. No U turn. No. Where they go do U turn for? For where? Look in the middle there, they don't put a valley in the middle. If you go into the middle, then a ditch you go enter. They've separated the opposite side with a valley in the middle. And the, the Lord will not deliver you when you bring some 23 in this valley. You will have an accident inside it when you enter it. <laughs> try to do it. You see it? Try it, try it, try, try doing it. You, you, you enter the valley, try doing a U-turn. Where you go to do it? This is what we call Yang Kong Kwan. Do you understand Yang Kong Kwan? Yang Kong Kwan means when you hit this highway, you don't stop taking your leg off of the pedal. You now see your leg just there, or you even set your cruise control. You see, you just set your cruise control and you take your leg off of the accelerator and it just keep firing non stop. Non stop. Non stop. Non stop. Non stop. You are not going to see an articulator that has broken down in the middle to block the entire highway. Non stop. If there is an emergency, in no time, helicopters are here. In no time. This is what we call highway. Not a highway with a traffic light in the middle at La Paz. Not a highway with a traffic light somewhere. Not a highway with a U10 and a T junction. Haba! How can you have a highway and I put a T junction? The sign on the left just told you no U10. The sign that we just passed on the left say U10, no U10. And by the way, all these trucks you are seeing, where are they coming from? This is where we want our continent to be, isn't it? We are not diminishing or tarnishing our image. These things are all linked to development. Imagine if I have to do extra six hours on this two hour or three hour journey. Then I end up doing seven hours. After this long night, how will my body feel? Huh? How will my day look like? Stress, your whole day is wasted. I mean, I think, you see, the road should not add to your stress, isn't it? As I'm driving on this road going home now, I feel ter it's, it's like therapy. Because as you're driving now, you are just all your stress is beginning to go by the time you get home oh my god the cruise on the road no pothole your buttocks is not dancing you are not feeling like shitting because you jump into one battle see wow and this is where we want the continent for god's sake this is what the this is what we want for the continent of africa not just in mauritius not just in south africa not just in maybe egypt we want it across africa where roads are linking continent and cities when roads are linking you know from accra to kumasi edemu yankonkwa from tamale to sunyani mm, no ebony star no porthole no jesus how can you be driving on this highway and see jesus how 
Jesus is busy dealing with Buhari and Tinubu and Obi. <laughs> Jesus is busy dealing with Nanado and Mahama. Jesus should not be dealing, dealing with you here. Pressing break because there is a big bottle that you just saw surprisingly. See road. See road. Who is going to shout Jesus here? Which bottle? Is Chaka saying there is no portal in Canada? No, there are portals. But I'm telling you, when there are portals, they get they, they fix them real good and fast. <laughs> if this road develops a portal, you can rest assured they will fix them good in no time. But this is what taxes are used for. This is why people are just calling for good, good leadership across Africa. The Kagami, poor Kagami type of leaders. You know? Uh -huh. And you know, I'm not hiding it. The Peter Obi kind of leaders in Nigeria. You know? Yeah, I believe in Peter Obi. Not because he's a saint, he's not. But I just think that man will cause a change. I just think so. I know Nanado deceivers in Ghana. Nanado deceivers, that man told us a lot of stories. Story, story. He told us we believe the more. Charlie. African politicians today, they wise so they know how to deceive us and lie to us and we believe that they did. So it's not like we are unwise and we just vote for them more. I don't think so. Sometimes they are just too good at deceiving us. They are just too good. They are just too good at deceiving us. The, 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 lie, the lie is too good. We don't, we just can't see it. Eh? Even me, where are they here? 2016, I was rooting for Dana Akufuado. I'm telling you. I just felt like that guy was just the kind of messiah of our time, you know. I said, I was looking at it. I said, okay, when I look at this man and what, uh, there's not enough track record. But I just felt like maybe, maybe. He's the one that kind of intuition, you know. This one, a wrong intuition. I got it wrong. I got it wrong, wrong, wrong. You know it. I'm not hiding it. I'm not hiding it. I got it wrong. If I have the power to decide whether he should go today, I will tell you he should leave today. <laughs> not only him, all his ministers, everybody should leave. See, but I know if we ship, if we ship any of our people to Nigeria, Nigerians will say, Ah, you guys are doing well in Ghana. You people enjoy electricity for one week with no issue, you are complaining. <laughs> in December, when I was not even home, I traveled to Cameroon. I came and Nepal still brought me bill <laughs> for no electricity supply. Yeah. Anyway, Charlie, God is good. You see road? I hope say they see road though. Hmm? And you haven't even seen any of it though. There is a particular road network in the whole of Canada called Trans Canada. Write it down. When you enter this country, you drive on it one day. <laughs> it's called Trans Canada. Trans Canada. T R A N S. Trans Canada. What kind of road is that? Trans Canada is a highway that links all the provinces in Canada. Just imagine a highway that has been constructed to just link province to province, just like that. Those kind of highways, when you are driving on it, my people. You will just be going like this. You will not even see any car. The road is just clear and good. If they do, you say, Charlie, if go do, you say, be you alone, he did a road top. It just there is a young con You know those kind of roads when you are driving from, say, France to Amsterdam, or maybe from Amsterdam to maybe Germany, and you are just going, you don't see no police, you don't see no car, it's just you, and you are just cruising, and you have your car on cruise control, and you just take your leg off of the accelerator, and you are just cruising and cruising and cruising. Trans Canada. The day I drove on Trans Canada, I said, whoa, see road, Trans Canada. My people, Trans Canada is, is not like five lane, six lane. No. The way they've just designed that road with the idea that it links the entire country, the quality is the same. And traffic is not on it. Most of the time, you just see one car. One car alone, just going, you, know, you might, you look. My pastor said something in, in, in church some time back. Even in my, one of my videos on my, you may have heard him say, he said he drove from Canada, uh, from Ontario to Manitoba. They drove. I think they drove from Ontario to Manitoba. You know, Ontario to Manitoba is also for a couple of hours, right? And they drove for close to what? Is it one hour? They said they drove for close to one hour. They never saw a car going and a car coming. Just think about this. Imagine driving for one hour, close to one hour. You are not seeing a car from behind you coming. A car in front of you you are also not seeing a car from the opposite direction coming on the opposite side just you and yet the road network is just that good and those are the places that you'll be tempted to fire 200 and something kilometers so <laughs> you may not even know that they have helicopters that are patrolling and see they may be watching you 
drive with satellite they are seeing you flying before you realize from somewhere police are just waiting for you in one corner you know <laughs> oh my goodness trans canada god is good may god give choco melonia the strength i will tour the whole of europe if possible i will tour europe i'll go from one country to the other i'll tour canada drive around canada to show you the other sides of canada that is different from ontario even show you the villages in canada for you to see how they are not with the intention of shaming Africa or Ghana, but just to let you see how the other side of the universe looks like. So that when we dream, we can dream big. When we are holding our leaders accountable for using our taxes, we can hold them accountable real good. See it? You have no regret in telling them to do the right thing. But this is where they send their children. This is where they bring their children. This is where your politicians come for medicals, examinations. But they don't want us to have it in Africa, isn't it? When you begin asking, they say you they do too known over Sabi. Now, now you alone we go Canada. Now you alone we go Canada. People just don't like it when we are even asking questions. The moment you begin asking, they say you, you are talking too much. Nobody wants to ask questions. They want all of us to be numbed into youth who cannot ask questions. Youth who can just celebrate mediocre mediocrity. Youth who can just say okay to the crumbs they are giving us. Whilst they are living like Arabian kings and queens, living in private jets and mansions, you know, you know, they don't know, they don't, they don't fly economy, they don't even use the bad roads, they don't even use SUVs, they use V8s, those ones that can hit portal and will not even feel it, you know. Anyway, God is good, God is good. What we are doing here is not an agenda to shame the continent of Africa. But it's an agenda to let Africans know that life ought to not be so difficult, you know? Life is not supposed to be that difficult. We are not saying life is supposed to be super easy, but it's also not supposed to be that difficult. For many of us, if we can just get a decent living, work, provide for our families, be able to afford to pay their to school fees, be able to send our kids to hospital when that is all we're asking for it's not like we're asking for million dollars and range rovers and you know what i mean we are not looking for the kind of you know sack or dear kind of money or you know fame and style some of us all we're looking for is just a simple life that's all we're looking for and it's not like we're lazy we're just asking for things like this imagine a good roads that can allow a farmer to move his crops around you know good electricity that can allow a businessman to do his business you know, systems that can allow people to just you not know, move. If you want to do anything, just go around and do it. It's done. You don't have to crack your head and worry and stress. Some of the things that stress us, yeah, they are just basic, basic common sense stuff. You know, you go to, you go and argue with somebody at the bank just over something that should have taken one minute to resolve. You argue with the person. You come home now, you are so angry. Huh? You are sitting home now, you want to watch your favorite movie, Light Off. When they finish, they'll bring bill the next day. Meanwhile, the service has not been provided, they bring bill. You sit there, you are just angry at yourself. And they don't understand where our anger is coming from. The anger is from the little, little, little frustrations here and there. Little, little frustrations. Frustrations of the system, you know? You know? The little frustrations here and there. Your child has done so well in school. You are so excited. You want him to go to secondary school only for you to get there and realize that they are demanding ridiculous bribes and all kinds of things, you know? Your, your wife is about to deliver. You are so excited to go to hospital and walk out with your baby, you know, and you get it and something is frustrating you. you there is no doctor or, you, you know, that, those little things. These are the things that frustrate life. These are the things that take away the joy of the quality of life. And these are the things Chaco is advocating for. You see? It's not like the Canadian government is putting food on our table here. We work for our own money, but the joy that we can have roads like this to drive on. The joy that if we really need a job, we can get one tomorrow. Mm. The joy that if we want to change job, we can get one. Sure. The joy that we don't need to pay bribe to somebody. And you know, you know when we were coming, you we were talking about some of the things and then you were wondering why we could not do them. I said, yeah. Mm? I personally think <laughs> tribalism hasn't helped us. Mm -hmm. It hasn't helped us. At all. Mm? It hasn't. Tribalism has set us against each other. And I look at country Canada, even though there are different people from different backgrounds, I'm a Ghanaian, these are Nigerian, somebody's a Sierra Leonean. When we are where we are all bounded together. It's not about na tribalism or national, it's all about one people. But back home, tribalism has just caused an unreligion. Oh my goodness, how can I forget that one? Mm. This is not to say religion itself is bad, but the way people have manipulated religion. Exactly. You know, politicians have manipulated it. 
even spiritual people have also manipulated it. Sure. Yeah. Hmm? And these things now now begin to set our heads. Look at Nigeria now, beautiful country. Hmm? People are not agreeing. You come to Ghana, you think we are also united. Wait on you. Wait, wait until you, you meet Mr. Efu number no. nine in the corner with a fancy man or with an Ashanti or with a gamma in one corner. When you see the tension, you will know that tensions are also there. Why? But, but you see, our tribal differences is supposed to be our linguistic uh, 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 wealth or richness. That is supposed to even make us so unique. But because we like to exploit this and feel that we are better than other groups, you know, an Ewe man thinks it's better than a Khan, an Aka man thinks it's better than a Fanti, a Fanti man thinks it's better than a Gan, a Gan man thinks it's better than a Dagomba, a Dagomba thinks it's better than a, a, full, a full animal, full animal thinks it's better than a Hausa. Ah, where are we going with this? So you always think you are better, but yet you cannot live alone, you need the other person. Eh? Eh? The Ewe man cannot produce everything, he needs the Akan man. The Akan man too cannot produce everything, he needs the Gan man. The gunman too needs to supply the fish for everybody to eat. The fancy man also needs to bring the fish. For, we all need each other. Yet, see how we struggle among ourselves. Huh? And then we stretch this kind of differences to the workplace. Huh? Somebody will tell you they will not rent a house for you just because of your tribe. Just because you are an Ewe man, they won't rent. Just because you are a gunman, they won't rent you. Just because you are an Akan, they won't rent you. What has tribe got to do with renting your house to somebody? Hmm? Just because of your tribe, you won't get a job. Just because of a political party, you won't belong. Eh? Even within the MPP, go and see how they are treating each other. As election is coming, that's how you are going to see how they are going to wash their dirty linens. Eh? Those that will stand against Alan, they will sideline all the Alan Cash people. Right? And then those that will also sideline Baumia, they will sideline all within the same party. You see the tension and the acrimony. Right? Right? Because for us, it's all about shoving the other people down so that we can look better. It's not about how we can work together. It's about how we can put one person down. Elections in Africa is not about development anymore. It's about how one political group, one tribal group, one religious group can seize power, use the power, the resources, state resources, to manipulate and oppress the other people. It's no longer about the development of the people. That is why when you watch our continent now, you see that the tension is just all over the place. Huh? But we are the most blessed continent. The continent with no winter. Except maybe you go to North Africa and you have snow. T t t tips of, uh, you know, tips, I, I, bits of uh, snow there. In West Africa, we don't even see snow. The last time I saw something close to snow was when I was a, t a, a young boy, like six, seven years old. Those days, it used to rain and the rain will, will, will be raining ice block. You see ice block or cubes of ice coming. For some reason, I have never seen it in Ghana since I grew up. We've never had rain that was raining ice. I don't know. It, it is. I don't know whether it is the sins that we've committed that has driven all those ice from raining. I don't know. You know, when we we're kids, we used to have rain that came with ice, ice block, and children would be running around picking them up and putting it in their mouth. We no longer see them. Hmm? Those things that made us beautiful. We grow up, and then you know. The Auza man, the Christian, the Ewe man, the Gan man, we are in school as children, we play along with each other, we don't know hatred, and then they begin to culture us, especially starting from our parents. Evil parents, are you watching me? Evil parent, this week, you've told that child to fear, to fear that Akan man, you know, be so? You've told that, that, that child of yours to fear the Ewe man, you know, be so? See your life. You see, you are the ones who are raising and indoctrinating the next generation of you two. Huh? And all of this starts from parenting. All of this sometimes start from religion. You see a pastor preaching, preaching, preaching to put the other one. Me, I used to do the same thing. You know? When I was young and unwise, I used to do the same thing. You know? That the Catholics are bad, avoid them. Jehovah Witness are bad, avoid them. This SDA is bad, avoid them. Roman Catholic is bad. Our own is the only true one. Our own is... A, how, how many Christians have done this before? As I'm talking now, some of us are still doing it. Our own is the only true one. Our church is the only, the church of SYZ is the only true church in the whole world. See it though? And yet, our heart is so far from Christ. Our heart is so far from Christ. We are so, so interested in just causing division. Denomination. Look at it. Look at the differences. Denominations. Huh? Somebody is doing their best to snatch you from one church to go to another church. Not because they want to win your soul for Christ. But because they want to empty the other church 
they never go to the market to go and win new souls. So they always go and snatch the one from other churches. Other churches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Baptist is busy snatching the member from the Catholic Church so that they can empty the Catholic Church. The Catholic is also busy trying to empty the Methodist Church. They are not going to the market to look for unbelievers who are drinking to preach to them. Mm -hmm. They are not. They are not looking for so many unbelievers who are doing super bets. They are looking for already made Christians to snatch. Mm. To snatch. The person from Lighthouse Chapel today is interested in taking all the members from the Catholic Church. The person from which other Baptist church or whichever, you know, I'm, a, I'm originally a Baptist. So when I mention, it's not like I'm just mentioning any church. I'm telling you, this is our conduct. Yet spiritually, we are too far from the Lord Himself. Yeah. Why? We like sowing seeds of division seas of division you go to islam the same thing is there the sunnis are fighting the what the shiites the shiites are also fighting this group we cannot agree we cannot see each other as one we see each other as evil you can't tribally the same thing try one tribe trying to what suppress the other how do we develop with this kind of tension tensions <coughs> like this come our way you know what they do they block our ability to unite, to think together. You know what they do? They set our...